Praise awaits you, O oh God. In Zion to you, our vows will be fulfilled. You are the answer to prayer. To you, all people will come when we were overwhelmed by our sin. You forgave our transgression. Blessed are those who choose to come near to you. And to live within your courts, we are so filled with the good things of your house and of your holy temple. You answer us with awesome and righteous deeds. God and our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth and the Father of seas who formed the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength, you strike the roaring of the seas, the roaring of the waves, and the turmoil of the nations. The whole earth is filled with your awe. And your wonders. When morning dawns and evening fades, there you call forth your songs of joy. Will you pray with me? Our Father in heaven, this morning as we gather together, Lord, in this place, and Lord, without you, we are nothing. But Lord, when you are in our midst and within the deep chapel of our hearts, Lord, and the chapel of our soul, it is there, Lord, which we meet you this morning. We lay before you an invitation to come as we worship you. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. And once more, I welcome each and every one. Thank you, Sister Julie, for uh, bringing us into a, uh, just to the realm of worship. Do I have any announcements before we went to our worship hour this morning? Uh, we have done. I have the four bears. Uh, I didn't see Arlene. I think one of them is yours. Okay. Mine is for Catalina Moat. She goes by Tina. Okay, it's Emily. Emily. Sarah Moats' sister, she's in the hospital this week, diagnosed with COPD. Okay. And others? Sarah, Sharon, I see some. Uh, the various boys are under treatment. I've checked with his mom and they're going in the evening to the hospital and then they'll be home for the rest of the day. Okay. So it's not Hi, a Debbie. very perfect scenario. Okay, we will. And the others? Take your hymn books out as we uh, turn to hymn number 601. <clears throat> I, cho I chose this number because of a little tiny fawn. I've seen it this week. In fact, I've seen it two or three times, but it kind of reminds me of a little poodle. Jerry's little poodle he cuddles at night. Big, tough logger. But as we was going to town, I don't remember what day it was. Uh, my truck takes so much gas, so I ride with my wife. And there was a mother and a fawn in the middle of the road. And I'm, I'm talking tiny fawn. So she seen us coming, and she ran into the woods, and the fawn tried to follow her, but he got stuck in the ditch. And she never left him or her. And we stopped rolled the window down, and there was the fawn, like two feet away. And there was the mother. 
constant abiding. She, she wouldn't leave her farm. What, what a picture of, of our Christ. And what a picture of, of life as a believer. We, we never leave. It's, you know, you've heard in the military, never, never leave a soldier. And, and I've heard story after story after story. True story, by the way. But it takes courage sometimes. But constantly abiding. I pray as the next few months comes and as graduation comes and goes that we, we as a body, but, but we as Bible-believing believers can truly take this song and stand forth for the word of God. I don't know if you heard the, the kicker for the Kansas City Chiefs. I think I can be a Chiefs fan. He stood for marriage and they're crucifying him. But there he stood. A soldier for the Lord. Let us, as we sing, thank you again, Julie. Julie's having some problems seeing here, so if you wave at Julie, really really way but thank you and uh, the first hymns there's a peace in my heart that the world never gave may we all stand firm constantly abiding forever stand as we worship sister Julie <laughs>
Do we have prayer concerns this morning? Or praise that you just want to share one with another before we go to the house of the Lord. Sister Pat. Yes, Beth. Um, my friend Coach West talked at work that lost her daughter a couple months ago, um, a few months ago, well, before Christmas or Thanksgiving, I don't remember what it was, um, just got news that her mother's cancer is back and it is not good. Okay. I don't know her name. She just I just recently seen her post it. So if you could just keep her and her mother in your prayers and her <laughs> siblings as well. Both of you are taking it pretty hard, and I'm sure it's still fresh with losing their daughter, and now her mom's gotten the cancer and is not well. So. Just continue to keep her in your prayers. So. Okay. I see another hand there. Arlene. One of the prayer bears we did last Sunday was for Sheriff Mo Pritt. Mo passed away mm -hmm. Monday night. Mm -hmm. I asked him to remember his family, remember the Preston County deputies. They are having a very tough time with losing him. I have two or three people that have cancer and fighting that battle, and we have lost four to the government. The military has been called up, so we're kind of hurting for people. We will. Thanks, Arlie. They, they would appreciate your prayers. Yes, Mr. Sharon. Um, well, just to praise, yesterday was the Angel Men and the yes. Foundation Walk, Rosie's Walk, actually in Garrett County, and um, we raised twenty thousand dollars for the first year, and Rosie walked in her little walker <laughs> at the finish line. I thought my granddaughter walked in that and had sparkles all over on the scene. Yeah, so. yeah, and Andrew's wife's little grandson was there, and there were three other angel and kids there. Okay, so that's awesome. God. Amen. Thank you, Sharon. So, update on that. Others? A little quick update on me. I go uh, this Thursday to. Uh, see the surgeon, they want to put my port back in. So, uh, and I'm gonna take Becky's advice. Did you ever be late on giving someone good advice? <laughs> Last time when I went through cancer, she went through it first, her and, and you know, and Scott. She said, uh, Pastor Donnie, what, whatever you do, don't eat anything you really like during chemo. Too late, Beck. <laughs> I was weeks, months, and even before I could ever even smell coffee. I said, here, you're sick. Here, take this. You really like a good cup of no. Nah. <laughs> so anyway, thanks, Beck. And I'm going to text. And we started. I, if I like it, don't eat it. <laughs> but uh, thank you. That's where I am. Uh, am I looking forward? Heavens no. Uh, but uh, I'm looking forward uh, to what God has in store for every one of us. Unspoken request. Welcome back, Julie. Sister Julie, bring us in. Lord, listen to your children
Lord, there's no English language, Lord, in the world that can ever bring enough glory unto you. And Father, we hurt. I hurt and this body hurts. <laughs> we see the ones around us belittle in our Savior using his name in vain in anger and hatred. It's the Lord in times such as these. I pray that these prayers, Lord, of these people Soften the pain that Jesus went through for us and for all mankind. And Lord, thank you for ones who take care of the elderly and the hurting and the, in the little homes, Lord, that are scattered. Challenges await them every moment of every day. So strengthen, Lord, the caregivers. Strengthen the administrators. May they see the person, Lord, <coughs> that is suffering and hurting and not the disease. And Lord, there's something special about friends, co-workers, and mothers, and fathers. And you've called another dear mother home, Lord. But the greatest thing, Lord, about mothers who believe in you, nothing's changed. We can still love them just as we was and did when they was here on this earth. They're still our mothers and fathers, Lord. Waiting to be who you've called them before the foundations of the earth. And the county, Lord, is hurting, too, as it lost a great leader. And Lord, thank you for godly leaderships. Thank you for a godly person, Lord, who's not afraid to stand up, even as a little kicker, Lord, unbeknownst by thousands and yet belittled by millions is standing up for his wife and mother. May we likewise, Lord, count it a privilege to suffer for you. We thank you, Lord, for each one that is here this morning, each guest, each visitor. We thank you most of all for that still, small voice that lives with inside of us. Continue to move, Lord, as School's about to be out for the season. Many graduating, many getting married. For Lord, in the world where we travel, in our homes, and careers, may they see Jesus in us. It's in Christ's name I pray. Pastor Donnie, I got an alphateral thought. That's awesome. <laughs> Honestly, my thought um, came from a message that Pastor Donnie did a few Sundays ago when um, he read about Jesus talking to Peter about, do you love me? Feed my sheep. And it got me to thinking about several years ago um, when I took over the day-to-day -day operations of our farm. And in my heart, I kept hearing, feed my people, feed 
my people. And I, I question God so much. I'm like, how in the world can a ministry come from pulling weeds, growing vegetables, and tending to sheep, literally tending to sheep? But I kept hearing, feed my people over and over again. So even though I didn't understand it, even though it didn't make any sense whatsoever, I did it. And in the beginning, I did it largely by myself. And there were daylight to dark hours of being out working in the fields, working with the sheep, doing the farmer's market, a lot of time on my knees. And part of that time was in prayer. And I'm not going to lie, part of the time I was crying because I didn't understand how this could be a ministry. But I obeyed, and I kept doing it, and I kept doing it. And we got involved with the WOOF program, which stands for Worldwide Organization for Organic Farmers. And as a farmer, I can sign up as a host to host young people that want to learn about organic farming practices. And uh, we also became a very solid vendor at the Morgantown Farmers Market. I served the market as president of the association for several years. And eventually I began to see that feeding his people was more than the physical food. It was feeding them emotionally, spiritually, and also through teaching things of stewardship for his creation. The Lord has opened so many doors for me to share his love with so many different people. I could tell you story after story after story where the Holy Spirit moved in a situation and I feel that people walked away with a blessing. And he used me pulling weeds and tending to sheep to do it. There's more to giving to God than putting money in that offering plate. But that's a great way to start. Because Salem has a huge heart for giving. And the money that is put in that offering plate is used in so many wonderful ways that are blessings to many people that we will never, ever meet. But God, God's doing it. And he's going to move just by us obeying. And the results are rewards for eternity. I should come forward for the morning offer. Let us stand together. <clears throat>
And our Father in heaven, this morning again, we place our thanks at your altar. Receive now, our Father, as Sister Kathy has reminded us. May the rewards be yours. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Remain standing, if you would. Take your hymn books. Uh, choir's not singing this morning, but turn to 626 and just once through. Uh, a direct follow-up from uh, Sister Kathy's uh, challenge about uh, just day-to-day -day working and uh, where the shepherding comes in. Thank you. Sister Julie, bring us in. <laughs> And now may we as a body of believers in Christ take out your Bibles and turn with me to a, a book that is filled with hurting people. Many reasons. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 1. And as we read Philippians, I want to remind you that Philippians 1.27 is where we want to start. But I want to remind you where this passage or this teachings came about. Paul is in prison. He started the Philippian church on his second missionary journey. And he's in prison for obeying the word of God that was instilled in his heart. And as he's in prison, the Philippians send a almost, for me personally, an impossible name to pronounce. So I'm just going to say a dear friend. Went to Paul in Rome, well, where he's under house arrest, and Timothy goes to start ministering to him in in prison, and he sends this money to help him along the way. And many are belittling Paul because he is a believer in Jesus Christ, and yet he's in prison. So they use that as a as a lever. To say, well, if God truly loved you, you wouldn't be in prison. I can't tell you the number of times I'm guilty as charged that I have been belittled for getting cancer. This, I'm going to stop there on that one. But this is where Paul is. And the little church in Philippians is struggling because their pastor's in prison. And now they're hearing, well, if he was a true pastor, he wouldn't be in prison. And if you're two followers of Christ, you'll just 
denounce him and follow the real reason. So, so they're hurting. And Paul sends this letter back to them. I, I think, well, I don't think, I know. Every word was passed over the mind of Christ before it was ever put on paper. So this isn't Paul scribbling a note. This is Paul helping his church. And it's, it's alive yet today. Remember when Jesus told the church that he, When you go to search me, do it with fear and trembling. Search out your own souls with fear and trembling. You know, that's so misunderstood today that it's, it's one of the passages that's probably in the top ten of misunderstanding. Some think we need to fear God as going to trial or a judgment. Doesn't mean that at all. Not, not even in, in that hemisphere. What Jesus was saying, the fear that you don't want to hurt him. I'll do everything possible not to hurt my God. That's fear and trembling as God rejoices. Listen to what Paul told that, just that little church. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ. Starting with verse 27. And then he says, whatever happens, that means throughout your life, conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. I think we could stop right there. Guilty! I got it again this week. The American wave. And he was in front of us. I have no idea. None. But I'm glad I read this passage. Conduct yourself. Whatever happens, you are worthy of the gospel of Christ. In fact, let's just stop right there. Good, good place to stop. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we come before you, Lord. As the Philippians came before Paul, Lord, and they sent a dear friend to say, Paul, help us. We're hurting over here in this little church, Lord. And we're going to send, Lord, some funds to help our leader. Oh, he's in prison, Lord, but he's there because of nothing he done, but because of what he done for you. And Lord, I know there's a plan behind that. But, Lord, our plan is to help our servant, Paul. And Lord, try to send back word where we are. Help us to hold forth, Lord. And thank you again for the Holy Spirit that moves within us. In Christ's holy name I pray. Amen. Now, let me do the unpardonable. I'm going to jump a little bit of scripture here. Whatever happens, conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Jesus the Christ. And get down to 2 5. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. And then I want you to jump over. To number 13. 213. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Doesn't that just open up so so many avenues for our life? 
We live in a world today, and the world has always lived that way, even from the Garden of Eden. There's that, that worldly side, and then there's that spiritual side of us. Do you know God's plan hasn't changed one bit from the very creation of time? God is still very much at work, and he's still committed to his original plan. And his original agenda for your life hasn't changed. Now, this is a question. I don't know where it comes from, but here it is. And I, I do need someone to answer me, you know, like verbally. Do you feed a cold or starve a fever or starve a cold and feed a fever? Don't know. Come on, somebody give me something. <laughs> it is. So do you feed your spiritual soul and worry more about it? Or do you starve it and worry about the body? Ooh, that's an easy one, isn't it? Kind of changes, doesn't it? Until one embraces spiritual life, what Darlene Rose called the chapel of her soul, you'll have a difficult time. You'll have an impossible time of turning your focus away from what is happening on the outside. You see, what will happen and the collateral damage of focusing more on the outward body is you'll try to measure and evaluate God's love with his involvement in your circumstance. That's what was happening here. And it was present tense. And you'll overlook the most important thing next to the cross itself. And that's the activity that God has within the chapel of your soul. What a difference that'll make. We live in a world today, and I've shared it several times, of, of thrills. What will happen to a Christian believer when the thrill of being a Bible-believing, walking in the truth, Christ, children, is gone? What will happen when that first thrill of giving your life to Jesus is gone? And we begin to think, Well, God, you're just not holding up to your end of the deal here. Or even worse, we can't find that direct link between our prayers and daily life. Wow. And the first thing you know it, God's no more of a reality in your life than life itself. When we start starving our spiritual life and when we start feeding this worldly game, we'll start playing the what if game. We don't go there. so easy in the world today that, well, if, if God's in heaven, he, and there is the, remember the favorite test I love going to school, model choice, had three chances, one and three to get it right. If God wanted us to know him better than he would, 
Well, if God protected me more, then I wouldn't be in this mess I'm in. See how easy it is to start starving and consoling. See how easy it is not to embrace that spiritual life that God has given to each and every one of us. And the collateral damage is we began to start avoiding God at all costs. We began to avoid the idea that God really does want to change us. I've shared several stories and I'll not go into the story, but my mother just loved to rearrange furniture. And I've shared one story how she, I could walk in my house where I grew up, not a large house, but it was a long way from tiny, and I could walk in the front door because we never locked our doors, never shut the interior doors, the hall doors, the dining room doors. Everyone, you know, there was no open concept. It was a closed concept, and it was the door that separated the kitchen from the dining room, the dining room from, and just right on down the line was all doors. Had a long hall, and I could walk in the front door. Be like walking in right there, walk up through here, take a left, first door on the left. That was my bedroom. I could go in it, never touch a wall, and walk right into it. One day, Mom shut the door. <laughs> and I come in the dark. You know, I never turned the light on. And wham, right into the door. You see, she rearranged the furniture. Let's stop rearranging our heart and let God truly change us for his glory. You see, God's not satisfied. I'm so glad he's not. With just saving your soul from hell. And that's, that's awesome and that's wonderful and that's truly a blessing beyond our imagination. But life doesn't stop salvation it only begins God is interested in every aspect of your life and my life and he don't want to rearrange us he wants to transform us to the image of his son that whatever happens in your life conduct yourself in a manner worthy the gospel of Christ. You can't do that on your own. There is no way. When we start getting the level, and maybe some things we won't make sense of. And maybe the circumstances in your life you have no control over. And maybe God appears as a distant deity where once he was right there in your heart. And I backed way off on feeling. Even the physical feeling. Sometimes when God appears at a distance, he's not uncaring. And we don't need to think our life is governed again by what Junior always said. There's no such thing as luck or chance. And when we start adopting this theology, I guess, for lack of a better word, And we leave the very solid truth of the word of God out. We'll be so busy on the outside. We won't have time for God on the inside. Let's face it. It's just a lot easier to focus on the outside. Even in the midst of chaos. But on the outside, we can at least see what's going on, can't we? We can at least see, but real life, according to the word of God, always begins when we embrace the spiritual life. You know, God's a wise investor. He 
he's not going to waste too much of his investment on a failing world. And life might be seen faster and faster. But oh, what a beautiful time when we began to put way more concern what's happening in the chapel of our soul than we do what's outside. Many times in life, we hear people say, well, I'm just going on a hunch. There's really nothing the matter with that on the outside. But the fact is, God is at work in all believers. Present time, that means you. That means God is at work in your life, in your soul, in that chapel of that soul. And Paul says, but whatever happens on the outside, God has given unto you the courage. For you act in a manner worthy. For it is God who works in you. You know, I'm sometimes I'm not sure what's going on. And I go through dry times just like everyone else. But this I know. Somebody's praying for me in the dry times. What a great feeling. Remember Paul Schaefer shared story after story, you know, when he was going through his time of difficulty with his life, and he said, oh, going through a dry spell here. He was making certain. Your soul's going up in value, my church. Your soul is going up in the stock of God the Father. You see, the question we should be asking is not why doesn't God do something. The question we should be asking, what's God up to now? I bet he's got a plan waiting for each and every one. And he's not acting on a hunch. He's acting on the love of a father for you. That's why Paul could sit in that prison. That's why he could take all the ridicule of the world. Did it hurt? It sure did. That's why Paul and Timothy could say to a little church in Philippi, We are servants of Christ Jesus. When you can truly say that, and once you see what God has planned for your character, I tell some, take way more than that, but be careful when you say that. Way more than that's coming. For my church, act in a worthy of the gospel. When you can lay down that knife, say, I wish I'd have said, no, don't go there. Don't even think it. charge, sir. Act worthy of the gospel of Jesus. And you'll be blessed because God is blessing those who love him. Can you imagine? Remember the story Paul and Silas in prison. Midnight came, shackles. I, I can't imagine. And they start singing a song. Worthy is the Lamb. 
No passage summarizes it better than Paul. My dear friends, that's worth it. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, what precious truth, Lord, your word gives us. We're all guilty, Lord. I'm the vilest of sinners. But your grace is poured out on us. May we as a body and we as believers take this passage. And Lord, may we never forget it. When Jesus looked over a belittling crowd, he just simply said, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. Taught Stephen the same. Likewise, may he teach me and teach others the worth of your name. Amen. Take your hymn books now. We got a new one for you, and Julie says it's an easy one. We need it one time through, Julie. Okay. Don't you just love someone who has faith in you? Hymn number 214. Come thou fount of every blessing, but it's really praise the one who breaks the darkness. Sister Julie, let us stand together. And now as our young acolytes come, I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Brad Fran if he would come and have our closing prayer. He's a dear friend of mine and mostly closer friend to my, uh, my daughter. Uh, anyway, Brad is uh, just a Bible-believing dear friend. I just asked him if he would come up here, Brad. Uh, yeah, and uh, have our closing prayer. And also, would you have the pr prayer for the bears that Paul is here? And Joshua? Carry out the plan, Brother Brad. Let us pray. Holy Father, for it is you who works in us to will and to act in order to fulfill your good purpose throughout creation. Father, I want to praise you for not giving up on us. We are so unworthy, but you love us. And you have mercy on us. And I thank you that 
that as Pastor Donnie has said, that you did not leave us at salvation. You did not stop there. You have a great plan for us. No matter what the world may throw at us, to bring us down, to discourage us, to distract us from you, Lord. Oh, Lord, I pray for your grace that you would help us to hold strong to you and not be swayed, but know that you are always with us, guiding us and directing us according to your good purpose, fulfilling your purpose and bringing you glory and building your kingdom. And Lord, I thank you for the faith of this church, the faith to pray, that we bring these bears as symbols to hold, to remind us that there are those out in the world who need you, who need a healing touch, who need encouragement, who need strength to make it through the day. Lord, bless the ones that these bears represent. Touch them, heal them. Let them feel your presence, Lord. Send your Holy Spirit to fall on them so that they know that they are not alone, that there is a God in heaven that loves them and has a great plan for their lives and a great plan for, for the trial that they're going through. We worship you, Father. Lord, I pray that you keep your hand on Pastor Donnie, that you minister to him, that you speak to him, that you guide and direct his thoughts, guide and direct his emotions, guide and direct those things to you, Lord, so he will keep his mind, his heart, his eyes, his ears set on you, so when through this trial, he will know your plan and he will follow you without wavering. And through it all, we watch. And you will be glorified because you are the almighty God. We praise you. Thank you for this church congregation. Thank you for Salem Church. Bless them. Strengthen them in you. And help us to go out into the world and not be scared not be distracted, but to face every challenge knowing that, it is, that it's all in your hands. Be glorified for the sake of your kingdom. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. you all.